Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to deploy your full stack application consisting of a React front end and a Node.js Express back end to Azure Web Services. So let's get started. Uh, firstly, I have in front of me a brand new uh, React app that I've created using Vite. Uh, I also have it linked already to a GitHub repo, this one here. Let me just refresh. Yeah, so it's just a copy of my code there. Okay, so actually deploying the front end is actually really easy. So let's start there, and then we'll do the back end later. So I'm gonna type in Azure Feet Deploy, let's say, which brings up this website here, deploying a static site. Now, I'm gonna scroll down to we find Azure, save web apps, there we go. Okay, so the steps listed here are relatively straightforward actually. So first things first, we need an Azure account, free to sign up, so let's click that link there. Okay, now you can go ahead and click start free, they give you like $200 worth of credit initially. So I've already signed up, so I'm not going to uh, click that now. Go ahead and do that, and once you've done that, let's continue. Okay, so let's assume you've signed up now, and next thing make sure our code is pushed to github mine is great you'll find that the, the next step will actually do that if you haven't done that already you'll kind of include that in the process so the next step then is to install the swa or static web apps ex extension in vs code so let's do that and you can go to the extensions here static web app and this one here by microsoft Go ahead and install that. That will install this or add this little Azure tab uh, over here. So once we're in there, uh, we need to sign in. So you might actually be signed in already um, if you have another Microsoft extension uh, that you have signed in with, but I haven't. So let's go ahead and do that. This extension wants to sign in using Microsoft. Yep, allow. That's fine. Okay, so that just opened up my browser and prompted me to log in, which I've now done. So now my screen looks like this. Awesome. So let's go back to the steps listed here. Okay. So now it's actually just a matter of uh, creating a new web app. So to do that, I'm going to drop down here, static web apps, right click, create static web app. Awesome. Now you'll find if you don't have a repo already set up in your local uh, working directory here, it'll actually prompt you right now to create a new repo, but I already do. So it's asking me for the name of my app. I'm just gonna leave it as the default directory name here, Azure Practice, so press enter. Choose my region, Central US, sure. You can pick, uh, if there's a better one that's closer for you, you can click that instead. Uh, framework, well, I'm using React, so let's do that. Enter the location of your application code. So, for example, slash represents the root of your app. Now, feed actually provides some guidance on this. Designate the app root. Slash. Slash for us. I guess if I didn't want a repo, and add a folder, and I take a drill down, then I'll, this is where I'd specify that. But the root is fine for me. Now, the build folder, which Vite actually calls dist, so let's call it that instead. Dist. Great, and actually that's it. <laughs> so in the Azure tab in the output here, it's telling us step by step what's going on. And yeah, just like that, it's still done. Now, what's happened? Um, firstly, you'll notice that git, uh, or there was a fresh git pull command that just executed, and that's because a new workflow, GitHub workflow, has been set up. And we don't actually have to worry about any of this. This just works out of the box. So that's all created by the Azure extension, of course. Okay, so let's go ahead and view our site. And to do that, oh yeah, click into it, click to view resource. Uh, for some reason, that's not working for me. So, ah, uh, okay, no, just brings up this little menu on the left. So once I'm here, uh, I can right click my new static web app. You can see it's uh, right there in our list. And then go browse site. Do you want a code to open the external website? Yes, I do. 
And yeah, great. There's our static web app. Awesome. So that's all done. Next, let's try doing our Node Express backend. So let me go ahead and set that up and then I'll come back. Now, before we get started, we first actually have to change something to our Azure account. And that is, currently our Azure account is a free account, like completely free, right? But in order to publish our backend and utilize what is called Azure Web Services, uh, we have to change our account type to a pay-as-you-go account type. Now, practically, that won't have any, that won't make any difference. Uh, the account comes with $200 worth of free credit, right? At least at the time of this recording. And the app that we're going to publish today is going to have a super, super, super minuscule effect on that. Okay, so it's completely fine and it won't actually cost you anything. Uh, to change your account type. So, how do we do that? Um, I'm showing you just screenshots here because I've already done it and I can't show you um, how you would do it otherwise. So, the screenshots. Uh, in your Azure portal, so here in your portal, you want to search at the top here for subscriptions. That brings up this one here. Click that. Click into your subscription. I believe you should have something here. If not, click add. I'm pretty sure you should have free from memory. Anywho, now uh, once you're in that screen, you should see upgrade subscription there, little button. Somewhere you should say upgrade subscription. So click that. Um, then it kind of presents you with a few different options. Now, these options aren't to do with the plan, it's like they're not to do with. Um, allowing you access to services or not versus a developer plan, standard plan. This, from my understanding, is just a support plan. So if you want technical support, you have to pay for that. So that's what this, these charges are. So you want to click no technical support at the very bottom there. Great. Then you can click the upgrade button and you should be all good to go. It took me a while to figure out that this was actually causing me a problem when I first did this because I didn't have this uh, plan in place. So once you upgrade your plan, uh, then you'll be able to proceed with the next step. Okay, so assuming you've now done that and you have a uh, valid Azure subscription there, let's go ahead and proceed. All right, so I've now set up my Node Express app here. Uh, all it is doing is, well, whenever I access the root endpoint, sending back the string of text here. And that's what I see here. Great. So let's go ahead and deploy that. So before I can do that, I need to install the extension, which is called Azure App Service. So go ahead and search for that and select the one here by Microsoft and install that. Cool. Now, once you've done that, we can now right click under the resources tab under the Azure uh, section here, uh, create new web app. Cool. Now specify a globally unique name. This is essentially the subdomain name. Um, we didn't get this choice when creating a static web app. They just kind of generated a random URL for us, subdomain URL for us. But this time we can specify. So let's go Azure practice. I doubt that's going to be free. Let's see. Yeah, no. <laughs> Let me just have a username to the end there. Let's press enter and select my node version. I'm using version 20. Uh, select pricing tier. So I'm just going to select the free uh, pricing tier. Uh, you can investigate these what these different tiers offer. Okay, so free. Now creating the actual app service doesn't take all too long. So we can see here at the bottom, these were some earlier attempts, um, but we can just look at this one at the bottom here. Great web app, currently in step seven. So that should just take another second or two. And Great, okay, so that part's done. 
So the next thing to do is just deploy our site. So CC create a new web app. Uh, there's the URL. Now if I go to that URL, just for fun. Nothing, <laughs> essentially. I think eventually it pops up with a, an Azure loading screen, a like welcome screen saying, you need to configure your app, something like that. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead now and deploy our actual data. So the first step actually, what we've just done is create the service. Next step is to deploy our code. So let's go deploy here. And if I, all right, the top here, uh, it asks me where is my data that I want to deploy. And indeed, it is this directory location. Perfect. Now, if I missed that little pop-up down the bottom, or it disappeared, I can just right-click App Services. Sorry, not App Services, but my new uh, App Service here. So there it is. I right-click that and go Deploy to Web App. And that would bring up that same little screen that we just saw before. Now, what we saw just down there at the bottom, uh, that was a pop-up asking if we wanted to uh, essentially create a get workflow. So like how we uh, did for the first for the front end, uh, we can do that for the back end as well. Um, timed out there, but it gave us the choice to create that GitHub workflow or to uh, skip for now. So, okay, now this part, the deployment does take a little bit of a, a while, uh, maybe five minutes. So I will skip and come back once it's done. Okay, great. So that's completed. Uh, only took a few minutes there actually, which was great. So let me go ahead and click Browse Website. And if I didn't get that, I can right click here and go Browse Website from there too. Okay, cool. So there's that splash screen that I was mentioning from earlier. Um, so even though I've deployed it, you can see here it says your app is live, but we don't have your content yet. If you've already deployed, it could take up to five minutes for your content to show up, so come back soon. Uh, so let me just go ahead and in my portal, my Azure portal, um, let me go ahead and click App Services here. Now this might not be in the same order for you, so you might need to search for it. App Services. Okay, so there I am. And what we can see on the screen is essentially the status of the deployment. And it says here, last deployment was successful. Great, okay, that's all good. So it's just a matter of waiting for it to uh, show up. So let's come back here and just refresh. Nope, nothing yet. And, oh, there we go. Okay, we're out. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I would say simple as that, but I did run into some initial issues while uh, <laughs> getting this to work again. Um, but hopefully you found that helpful. And if you're interested, I also the other day, because I've just started using Azure App Services, to be honest, and I was also exploring uh, Azure Blob Storage, so essentially their service for hosting files, whether that's images or videos or data, whatever. Uh, for your website. And the other day I set up for one of my personal projects, Blob Storage, so that my front end could publish uh, photos, like a user could upload a photo and it gets stored in Azure's Blob Storage. And then I can access that and send it back to, access that file or photo and send it back to the front end. If you're interested in that, let me know and I might make a video about that um, separately as well. Okay, that's all folks. Thanks very much for watching. Good luck.